Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna look at vegan myths that need to be retired. Firstly, vegans have a lot going for them and they do not need to exaggerate or get information wrong if possible. You know, we have the clinical demonstration of the reversal of heart disease, the lower levels of several diseases like diabetes in the epidemiology, the averaging normal BMI, the lower cancer rates. You've got the massively lowered environmental footprint on several fronts, and finally, vegans are not paying to harm animals anymore. All of those are amazing things, but every once in a while, I hear a vegan perpetuate a myth that just irks me a little bit. And by the way, if anybody who eats meat is coming here to hear about how vegans are wrong, definitely not the right place. Meat eaters have a ton of myths that are perhaps more sweeping and more easily verified to be not true than these vegan myths that I'm gonna go through. A lot of these myths are clinged to yet very easily disproven. Quick example, how we require animal protein. All you have to do is look to somebody like Jahina Malik, who's been vegan since birth and is a professional bodybuilder, IFBB pro. And not to mention that vegans have higher blood levels of protein, according to the epidemiology. And another myth would be that we require milk in order to grow strong bones, easily disproven by the fact that the vast majority of planet Earth is lactose intolerant. And we've only consumed milk at all as a human species in the last 10,000 or so years. So for 95% of human history, we have not consumed milk and neither did all of our ancestors before that. Okay, rant over. Let's get to some of the myths that vegans mention. And the first one is still on the topic of bones and this one I used to believe myself when I first went vegan and it is milk is so acidic that it leaches calcium from the bones. The idea is that because higher milk consuming countries appear to have higher fracture risks that there must be something in milk that is doing this and so nutritionist originally pointed to the acidity of milk that the more milk you drank the more of these amino acids that you had in your system and despite the calcium in milk it was creating such an acidic environment in your body that it would leach calcium which is a base from your bones and even out the pH. And don't get me wrong at one point this was the going belief from Dr. Gregor of nutritionfracts.org quote the scientific community used to believe that the abundance of sulfur-containing amino acids in animal proteins would lead to a negative calcium balance. But that is outdated thinking. Now, Gregor wrote that six years ago, yet I just heard the myth perpetuated again three days ago at a VegFest at a live presentation where virtually everything else in the presentation appeared to be accurate. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that milk is a healthy food, and I'll touch more on that in a second, but the first point that just goes against logic in this whole picture here is that if it is amino acids, <gasps> acids that are so brutal for bones, then even anyone taking plant-based proteins should be really afraid, especially because they don't have a bunch of calcium in them. So we have to ask how acidic is milk and how much of a danger is acidic food for your bones? Well, firstly, cow's milk is only around 6.5 pH, which is hardly acidic at all. And secondly, from this meta-analysis on the topic of acidic foods leaching calcium from your bones, quote, there's no evidence from superior quality balance studies that increasing the diet acid load promotes skeletal bone loss or osteoporosis. Simply put, your body has a lot of ways to balance your pH. It can take more calcium from food. It has other bases that it uses. In fact, just breathing alkalizes your body. But the main point of everything here is that with this in mind, this does not mean that milk is healthy for your bones. I mean, we have to think about those studies that say things like, quote, high milk intake was associated with higher mortality in one cohort of women and in another cohort of men and with higher fracture incidence in women. We're still finding these results despite the super high calcium intake, so something is going on here. Maybe it's just a non-causal correlation, or it could be something else. It could be saturated fat, for example. So perhaps it's saturated fat clogging arteries and preventing nutrients from maintaining bones properly. Dairy is the main source of saturated fat in the US and looking to those other westernized countries with those high fracture risks, it's very fair to say that it's probably the main source there too. This artery bone connection has been studied pretty extensively from this study, quote, a correlation exists between osteoporosis and atherosclerosis regardless of age, body mass index, and cardiovascular risk. Plus, cases of low bone mineral density of the hip have a higher risk of cardiovascular mortality in both genders. So while we might not have clinical trials clogging people's arteries and then watching their bone mineral density go down, we have some pretty strong evidence in the literature. I think the main point here is that despite our society being obsessed with calcium and milk to form bones, the literature is showing that it's not having all these positive outcomes we think it would have, and it's probably not from the acidity, it might be from the saturated fat. And furthermore, that there are other very shocking negative outcomes of drinking milk that could be used when the same point is going to be made. For example, that studies like this show that after drinking cow's milk, you can see a crashing in testosterone and a rise in estrogen. 
estrogen in both sexes. That is ridiculous. All right, so let's move on to the next point, which is the misrepresentation of protein from plants, specifically from infographics that are pretty common. You've probably seen one. Here's an infographic that makes you think that broccoli has a directly comparable amount of protein as meat does. And firstly, it's going off calories. It says 100 calories versus 100 calories. First point here is that it's not comparing practical amounts. It would be like, a head and a half of broccoli compared to a few bites of meat. And then secondly, it seems like they got the amount wrong because when I type this in a chronometer, I only get seven grams of protein for 100 calories of broccoli. And that's just not cool. And I specifically wanted to point this out because I made the same argument against that environmental study, which was talking about how bacon is more environmentally friendly than lettuce. And that's because they compared the calories. They compared eating an exorbitant amount of lettuce to a small amount of bacon, which was not fair. I just feel like somebody who eats meat could look at this and go, this is just factually incorrect. And maybe they're having to make these lies up because you can't get enough protein and then you can reinforce your own beliefs. That's a possibility. There are a lot of really good infographics out there comparing legumes to meat, and those are definitely solid. Although this one, for example, compares 100 grams of dried beans to meat, which is not how you eat beans, but still. So for most beans, kidney, black, pinto, you would have to eat 250 grams to get that amount of protein. However, soy, you would only need to eat 120 grams, which is very comparable. However, they did not specify that, and it's not the case for most beans. So there are definitely accurate plant protein infographics out there, and I would encourage people to keep using them. But for those ones in particular, there's probably better ways to convey that you can get enough protein on a vegan diet and that it's not a point of concern. Here's a meme, for example, that you could use that I made a while ago that showcases the epidemiology on how vegans have higher levels of blood protein than omnivores. And because I know somebody at some point is gonna mention that, oh, this scale is not starting at zero. It's actually representing the normal range of blood protein, 35 to 55. All right, now for the next myth, which I was hesitant to include just because it has a nice sort of romantic feel to it, but it's just not, technically right and makes you sound a little like you're exaggerating and that is the idea that all human violence sort of stems from our exploitation and killing of animals that world peace would occur if we weren't exploiting animals i've heard this one a lot recently and i believe the origin is will tuttle's world peace diet and will tuttle is a great dude but this idea is just a little too far. For example, we have vegan people that are violent, that woman who certainly I would not consider vegan just because she was harming human animals, but she considered herself a vegan and she went and shot up YouTube headquarters, very tragic moment. I do wanna add though that I think it is a great point that the worse we treat animals, the worse we're likely to treat other people. And so there is a lot of truth to us. Yeah, we would have a more peaceful world for animals and for humans, I believe, if the world went vegan. But would the murder rate go absolutely down to zero forever immediately? I would have to, I can't say it would. Anyway, I feel like I'm doing a lot of naysaying in this video, but I'm just trying to make sure that people can make the strongest argument with the most factual information all right, I have a couple of honorable mention myths that I'm gonna go through really quickly. And the first one is that because you're vegan, you don't need to brush your teeth. I don't have any studies to show you on this one. I just know a few people that went on a fruitarian diet and thought they didn't need to brush their teeth because they were just eating all of these fruits and whole foods and natural stuff and their teeth rotted. They got more cavities than they had before. Totally anecdotal. You can decide to ignore that if you want. I just wanted to put it in there. I know I didn't make a super strong case here because I didn't have any data, but please, there's nothing to lose by brushing your teeth. There's something to lose by not brushing your teeth, and that is your teeth. All right, final myth that's been beaten to the ground so many times, uh, it's redundant at this point, and that is the myth that you don't need to take B12 as a vegan. I've been over this, I've done videos on this. Well, obviously the more important myth here is that no one should go vegan because they won't get enough B12. We still have to tackle the myth of people that say, I don't need to take B12, and then they don't, and then the levels get low, and then bad things happen. Now, nowadays we're not drinking unfiltered water, which is a source I've talked about that you can get the amount you need from in many cases, but take that B12, even if it's just a little quick spray that gives you all you need instantly. And thankfully vegans are getting on top of this problem. That recent study I always mention. this study from Switzerland showed no difference in B12 deficiency rates between vegans and omnivores, which is pretty great. 
All right, I hope this video didn't come off as too antagonistic or anything. I just think it's good to get the information right. And there's a reason I made 200 videos or so before this, because there were definitely more important points and those myths that are perpetuated by meat eaters. Now they're honestly way more harmful, but I've done a video about every single one of those almost. So I figured I might as well strengthen the vegan argument. And not that you can really see it, but this shirt, eat your own leg, which is a cute little lamby, is by Harmless Threads and I will link them below. Below. Feel free to like and subscribe and let me know how annoyed you are by the fact that I made a vegan myth video down below. Why not? Just hit me. Just roast it. Roast it. I'm here to roast. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.